remember my first time sitting behind the seat of an MRI scanner. I felt like a pilot behind the seat of a massive jet, millions of dollars of technology at my fingertips, endless possibilities. I press one of the buttons, and 10 seconds later, I'm looking at the inside of my friend's brain. I never felt so cool in my life. I spent six years studying MRI, or magnetic resonance imaging, during my PhD, and never lost the amazement and awe for magnetic resonance as on that first day. MRI allows us to diagnose brain tumors, to study the mind and its connections, to measure the heart's pumping function, to look at a baby in the womb, and even to examine some broccoli. MRI is better than any other type of imaging for looking at soft tissue. And it does this without any known harmful effects to the person or vegetable. The way MRI works is actually a pretty simple phenomenon that we can demo right here, right now. This is a coil, like the one we find inside an MRI scanner, and this is a magnet. And it turns out that the hydrogen atoms in all of our bodies behave like tiny magnets. As you'll see, when I move this magnet inside the coil, it's going to induce a voltage in that coil and cause this LED to light up. So let's dim the lights so you can see this full effect. So I move the magnet, LED comes on. Move the magnet, LED comes on. The hydrogen atoms in our bodies, which are like tiny magnets, spin around, induce a voltage in the coils, the scanner's coil, and that voltage gets translated into an image. So an MRI image is the result of measuring voltages from trillions of hydrogen atoms in our bodies. How magical is that? The not-so-magical part about MRI is that it is very expensive. Behind me is a video of an MRI scanner being installed. The scanner itself costs a couple million dollars. The cost of installation and building a special room for the scanner is another few million. The cost of an average run-of-the-mill MRI scan is over $2,000 in today's healthcare system. At that kind of cost, access to MRIs is limited. Luckily, there's a growing movement within the medical imaging world to make imaging cheaper, smaller, and faster. And that's what I've been working on as well. I got my PhD in biomedical engineering at a joint program between MIT and Harvard Medical School. I did graduate engineering coursework at MIT and part of medical school at Harvard. My PhD research explored the question of whether it's possible to obtain the same diagnostic information as an MRI at much lower cost. And the short answer is yes. What I was looking at is water levels in the body. Specifically, I was looking at something called fluid overload. This is a symptom that's present in many different conditions, and it essentially causes patients to drown in their own body water. The body is like a thermostat that tries to keep water levels in a normal state. Not too much fluid and not too little. When something goes wrong and the thermostat doesn't work properly, patients start to accumulate fluid in their lungs, their abdomen, their legs. And when too much fluid accumulates, patients' organs start to shut down. Fluid overload is present in some of the most costly and widespread health conditions in the US. We know that if we can detect and prevent fluid overload early, we can save people's lives. The problem is that there are no good ways to measure fluid levels today. The existing methods are either invasive or imprecise. For example, one of the main ways to measure fluid overload today is to check for something called pitting edema. This means that doctors press their finger into a patient's ankles and see if a pit forms. If it does, like in this image, it means the patient is fluid overloaded and needs medical intervention. Clearly, this is not quantitative, and this only actually shows up once there is a significant amount of fluid accumulated. 
my research shows that we can use MRI to quantify fluid levels in these patients. I found that MRI is able to identify fluid overload before signs like pitting edema appear. MRI is able to quantify water levels in the body because the MRI signal is coming directly from hydrogen atoms. And luckily, a water molecule has two of them. These are two MRI scans that I took. The person on the left has normal fluid levels, and the person on the right is fluid overloaded. But it's honestly hard to tell the difference between these two patients with these images. But when we apply special algorithms, the difference becomes much more obvious. The hot colors throughout the fluid overloaded patient's legs means that there's more fluid throughout the tissues. We can use MRI to quantify fluid levels at each and every pixel and know exactly where and how much fluid has accumulated. These scans were part of a clinical study we ran on dialysis patients. And dialysis patients are a type of patient that accumulate a lot of fluid and then get hooked up to a machine, like this one, three times a week to remove that excess fluid. We measure dialysis patients before and after their treatment. We found that MRI was able to quantify that initial fluid overload and then the subsequent decrease in fluid levels after dialysis. This MRI finding has never been shown before. And most importantly, MRI was able to detect fluid overload in these patients before clinicians could detect it on clinical exam. The problem is that MRI is too expensive. So once we made these discoveries using MRI, we then developed methods to get the same information much more cheaply. My lab has developed a portable magnetic resonance sensor that can take the same quantitative measurements without a full scanner. Behind me in this picture is a traditional MRI, and by my feet is the portable magnetic resonance sensor we developed. A traditional MRI costs a few million dollars. Our sensor costs a few thousand. Traditional MRI takes about 30 minutes for a measurement. Ours takes about three minutes. And a traditional MRI needs to be used in the scanner suite, whereas ours can be brought to the patient bedside. Most importantly, though, our sensor measures the same quantitative parameters as the full scanner. We use the sensor to measure our dialysis patients, and we found that the sensor could detect the same changes in fluid levels as the full MRI. Remember, we know that if we can detect fluid levels early, we can save people's lives. There used to not be any good ways to do this. Portable MR sensors could be the solution. We can imagine a future where these sensors are in every doctor's office so that physicians can diagnose fluid overload early and intervene before a patient ever needs to go to the hospital. My work on harnessing the power of MRI in a more convenient way is part of a larger movement. So let's take a look at what other researchers and inventors are doing to make imaging cheaper and smaller. Matt Rosen, a professor I collaborated with, has built a low-cost MRI scanner using coils of wire to generate a magnetic field. Traditional MRI scanners use superconducting magnets and thousands of liters of liquid helium to generate a strong magnetic field. Matt's system just needs regular copper wire. His system can diagnose traumatic brain injuries, analyze lung function, or look at any other part of the body. We can imagine putting the scanner in the back of an ambulance so that we can diagnose earlier while still on the way to the hospital. Or on the football field, so players can be triaged for head injuries on the spot. There are some researchers that are not using any magnets at all and simply taking advantage of the Earth's magnetic field to generate MRI images. This is an MRI image of a slice of a red pepper that they were able to take using the Earth's magnetic field. The cool part about Earth field MRI is that we can imagine a future where we simply have to wear coils around us that image us while we go about our daily lives. There's no need to go inside a magnet because we're already living on a giant one. And finally, the imaging innovations are not just limited to MRI. 
A medical company called Butterfly Diagnostics has developed a 21st century ultrasound probe that fits into your pocket. You simply pull it out, plug it into your phone, and can look at someone's heart like this on the spot or kidney or any part of their body. The cool part about Butterfly is that their technology is not years away. They're shipping right now, and this small device has already had a big impact in the medical world. These imaging innovations are democratizing access to the inside of our own bodies. I hope that this is just the beginning of an era of medicine where the power of imaging is not just in multi-million dollar hospital suites, but in the doctor's office, the ambulance, and eventually even your home. Thank you. <laughs>